little talk today about the difference between skirtless and skirted pistons for me. Now, forget the fact that this is an old OEM comp tube with a sleeve in it. I'll explain the reason why, but that one, this one has a full piston. This one's a skirtless piston. So without knocking everything over, what's the difference? Well, normally they both come in the same comp tube like this from me now, a full comp tube. The difference is <clears throat> when I use a skirted piston, there's one without the rod, the compression cylinder has to be a specific size. And that's because this piston is a specific size on the OD. And for it to work correctly, it can't go into a sloppy compression cylinder. So out of all my compression cylinders this last time, so many out the batch were able to be honed to a specific size, which would suit this piston, these, this type of piston. Some of them needed cleaning up further than that, and they were larger. And at the end of the day, that then relegates those, well, it's not a relegate, because it's still no different to being skirtless design, because the beauty of a skirtless design is that I can make these bearings on the piston, or I have them made with different sizes, so that obviously the piston can then be used in, in larger compression cylinders. Now, when I say larger, we're talking hundredths of a millimeter. The maximum size for this batch, for my skirt, my skirted pistons to go into one of these comp tubes was 22.05 millimeters. So anything between 22.00 and 22.05 or thereabouts below 22.1 could have a skirted piston in it. Anything larger than that has to be skirtless. Now, the differences. Skirted pistons use a smaller diameter spring. The spring's 220 mil-ish, 215, 220 mil long. It's a smaller diameter. Its rate is slightly lower than the spring that I can use in the skirtless pistons. The skirtless piston spring is larger in diameter. So skirtless, skirtless pistons use a spring which has a 14 millimeter ID. Skirtless piston, skirted pistons I mean. So the skirted pistons use a spring that's 13.3 millimeters ID approximately. And the skirtless is 14 millimeters approximately. They all slightly differ. Since I've moved over to aluminium bronze bearings and widened the spacing on the bearings, on the piston, and more accurately honed, or paid to have more accurately honed compression cylinders, which these are perfect. There is little to no performance difference between skirted and skirtless. The pistons, a skirtless piston might see a tiny little bit of rock as it flies compared to this piston. But with my bearings now being such a tight tolerance and these bearings do not expand like Delrin bearings and cause problems, the difference is negligible. I've actually swapped a similar kit in one of my test rifles had a, a skirted kit fitted. Taking the skirted kit out, put a skirtless kit in and seen a performance increase. Now, yes, you could say, well, that's because the spring's different and everything else. But at the end of the day, this was exactly the same stroke. And I had to de-stroke the skirtless kit, remove a couple of millimetres off the stroke to bring the power 
in with both the springs delivering pretty much the same energy. So it, it's, it's, it's neither here nor there. The big one is the skirtless pistons. Now with the Ali bronze bearings weigh around 140 grams-ish, 145 grams. The skirted pistons can be lighter, can be a lot, lot lighter. I set the weight of this piston by using a steel top hat within inside this piston. Now that can go to um, an acetyl top hat inside there, which is the only place I would now use acetyl. I won't use it on the back. I won't use it for a rear guide and I won't use it for bearings, except for the outside of, of these comp tubes where it doesn't really matter. But I can change to an acetyl uh, top hat inside there, which can keep the weight low, or I can change to a steel top hat, which ups the weight. And I normally set these, so these weigh the same as the skirtless or thereabouts. It all depends on what a customer wants. But at the end of the day, the theory is the lighter the piston, the less movement, but the more susceptible to piston bounce. Obviously, the lighter the piston, it has a harder time overcoming the pressure that it's generating in front of it. So at the end of the day, you it's a much finer balance. Now, from a DIY install point of view, skirtless is far easier than skirted because it's more flexible. You can adjust the stroke on a skirtless piston because you can heat the nose and take the rod out, out the piston nose and then you can re-glue it at different depths. So you can adjust the stroke. With this piston, the rod has to stay exactly where it is. So you're back in the realms of either adding preloaded washers on the spring or chopping a coil on the spring, you're back in, you're back in there where you, you don't have to do that with the skirtless. You can just adjust the stroke. So if this kit was delivering overpower, you just wind the nose off the rod by two, two or three millimeters and it doesn't compress the spring as far. It doesn't have the same sweat volume. So it, it lowers the power, much more flexible. The springs can stay untouched. No chopping, no messing around, no having to dress springs. And most people are capable with the use of a cordless screwdriver, a drill, cordless drill, and a blowtorch to wind the nose off the rod and let it cool down and clean things up and then re-glue it. A little bit of measuring. But anyway, regards, do they shoot differently? No. I could give you two of my rifles and you could shoot one blindfolded and the other one blindfolded and you would not know which one has the skirted or the skirtless piston in it. They don't feel any different. They don't shoot any different. So there are no real pros and cons. Well, there, there are. There's one slightly pro, pro and that is that I try, I'm setting these for summertime use. More people shoot through the summertime. And I went over polyurethane seals and the effects of temperature and how the material shrinks in the cold and expands in the warm. In summertime use, I can I can use, because of the, the slightly less rock, and this is why the, the idea of the compression cylinder is so critical. Because there is slightly less rock, you can get away with a slightly smaller front seal, which makes them a little tiny bit more tolerant to hot weather use. Now, I'm not saying warm weather use, I'm saying hot weather use, 40, 45 degrees C, like the worlds were in Italy. I've tested these at 60 degrees C with a piston seal set to work from around about 10 degrees, 8 degrees C and up. And it actually sped up the hotter it got. It didn't lose power, it gained power. Only a few feet per second, but it gained power. <coughs> Excuse me. So, can be a, can be a bit of a pain in the backside in, in wintertime where you have to fit a larger seal. But most most guys 
girls shoe summertime because obviously people don't like the cold so that's the that's the only possible real gain that that little tiny bit of added stability because it's a long piston can allow a slightly smaller seal so it has slightly enhanced but that said with these alley bronze bearings now on these pistons and the tolerance has been what they are because remember i know what the idea of this compression cylinder is but the tolerance has been what they are now there's barely anything in it it's negligible absolutely neg negligible anyway so what's the difference now you know it's more awkward to build these i've nearly run out of stock of pistons i think i've got three left i've got no compression cylinders of the right size that's why this one's a sleeve i had to i had some spare sleeves for warranty work and this sleeve was undersized it was 21.85 so i have honed the cylinder out to 22.00 or as close as i can physically get it with the measuring equipment that i have and this is going to a chap in Spain. But at the end of the day, these are a bit more awkward to build. Can be nicer. They all feature steel guides now. The only thing that is made of plastics is the seal on the front. For now, that might change. And at the end of the day, if the compression cylinders were the same internal size, you could flip between them. You could put a skirtless piston in and you could shoot it and then you could be blindfolded and someone could put a skirted piston in and you would never ever know. They don't really shoot any different. I only did it to give an alternative pe to people because people say that skirtless pistons are not very good. Well, they actually are very, very good as long as it's done right and with the alley bronze bearings, etc. now, I think they're done very right. Some of my best shooting rifles have skirtless pistons. So, at the end of the day, that's the difference. It's negligible. These are more expensive to make, though. And they're obviously hard anodized. 58 to 60 Rockwell hard. They don't need bearings. There's actually no meat to put a bearing on there. You cannot machine this to put bearings. Why you'd want to put bearings on, though, I've got no clue. This is a very low friction, as is the skirtless. At the end of the day, now you know.